So we're going to be getting stuck into geometry proofs, but before we get stuck into geometry proofs, um, we need to go through what we know and uh, how we know it. Um, otherwise, it, we, we can't really prove things unless we can rely on other things that we already know. So let's get started. So first of all, somebody somewhere decided that um, in a circle, so if you start by facing north and turn all the way through that circle, we can say that that's 360 degrees of measurement. Um, that was just something that someone made up. It's useful because it's got so many factors, it's easy to break up into multiple different sections. But there's no reason to choose the number 360 apart from that. Um, that we know. We can't really prove it because it's an invention, but we know 360 degrees. We can prove, however, that there is 180 degrees in this line. We can prove it because we know that. So we know that that and that are equal, and 360 divided by 2 is 180 degrees. And similarly, we can say that if we were to cut a straight line in 2, we would have 90 degrees. So these are things that we know, and we invented this, but these are proved from, from that. A plus A, uh, B plus B, etc., etc. So that's sort of our, our proofs for those things. Now, we have some neat ideas when it comes to those, which we can summarize as follows. So the three neat ideas, working from the bottom, complementary angles, supplementary angles, and explementary angles. You've probably never heard that phrase before, but there you go. So, uh, working from the top now, explementary angles. If this angle's A, then this angle must be 360 minus A. Um, we know that 360 degrees in a circle, we've got that, we've got that. Proof. Proof. Uh, I'm using proof because these are not great proofs but I don't have time to prove them super formally. All right, supplementary angle, B, so that's gonna be 180 minus B. And if that's a right angle, and if that is angle C, then this is gonna be 90 minus C. So these ideas of explementary, supplementary, and complementary angles are useful tools to us when it comes to geometric proofs. Let's go through some more useful tools. So, two, parallel lines and what we call a transversal running through them. Now you should remember some of this transversal stuff. Um, now before I get to um, the actual sort of transversals, let's just deal with this line and this line so we can talk about a couple of little tiny things about that. Uh, let's call this angle A. Now this, um, as we know because we just did that, is uh, 180 minus A because there's a straight line. What's this? Well, uh, we could say that this is uh, 180 minus that thing, because that's a straight line and that, so we can say minus 180 minus A. Now the 180 is going to cancel out, and it's minus minus A, which is A. Uh, we just proved using supplementary angles that these vertically opposite angles are equal. And I can keep working around the circle and prove that this is equal to this. Um, vertically opposite. Okay, so now let's get into the actual um, parallel lines and the transversal itself. Might need to tidy things up a bit. Now, these lines are heading in the same direction, which means that they are making the same angle with the transversal as each other. Um, which means that essentially this block here is the same as this block here. Uh, and we've got some, some fancy words for that. These angles are corresponding angles. They're in the same spot in this block as they are in this block, and we can say that they're equal. Corresponding angles. Uh, you might have heard of it called the F rule before. F rule. Uh, called the F rule because I had trouble seeing this at school. Um, if I were to make these my corresponding angles, which are corresponding angles, that's B, that's B, we get like an F. I don't really see it, but whatever. Um, there's my F rule. Uh, corresponding angles. Now, another rule. Um, given that we these, this block matches this block, and this letter matches this letter, we can say that this angle matches this angle, which matches this angle, um, which are called alternate angles. But it really, it's just uh, the fact that we know that 
and we know that little vertically opposite rule and we can follow along from there. It's called a Z rule because it looks, if you draw that in and you draw that in, you can draw a Z, whatever. Uh, finally, we've got uh, co-interior angles. But, uh, so a co-interior angle says that this bit here, this is sometimes called the U rule. I hate this one. I'd rather call it the C rule, but whatever. Um, a plus B will add up to 180 degrees. And it's basically because that's B and that's B and, and they're on A and B are on a straight line and A and B could be on a straight line, so they add up to 180. So those three rules, the F rule, the Z rule, and the U rule are going to be very important to us when we're doing geometric proofs and we kind of just assume that you know them. I'll put the proper words up there in a second. Recapping, someone invented 360 degrees in a circle, uh, which meant that we could prove that a straight line has 180 degrees. We can prove that a right angle, uh, something perpendicular to that 180, would be 90 degrees. Now, using those ideas, we come up with explementary, supplementary, and complementary angles, which is useful in geometric proofs. If we know that, we know that. If we know that, we know that. If we know that, we can find that using 90 minus C or 180 minus B or 360 minus A. Um, now, building on from this a little bit, it's not hard to prove the idea of things being vertically opposite. Um, that's 180 minus that. You saw me do it. Um, now, when it comes to parallel lines and transversals, we have these three neat little rules here, which are really just, um, just they just flow on from our ideas of supplementary angles. Uh, there's nothing, there's no new magic about that. Uh, so hopefully everything's been building from the ground up. Uh, probably just a couple of things you might be taking for granted that we probably just need to look at real quick. A triangle. Uh, now, you already know that the this angle, A, this angle, B, this angle, C, if I add up A, B, and C, I'm going to get 180 degrees. You know that, but how do you know that? Um, okay, so I'm going to do something called a construction. Uh, this line here, I'm going to draw another one that's parallel to it. Now, why is that useful? Well, I'll just draw that pink so we can really see that they're, they're parallel now. Okay, parallel, parallel. What I have now is a transversal. I have like one transversal there. And so let's just deal with that transversal for a minute. Um, now, it's not going to be hard for me to like apply the Z rule there and say that that's A, right? Like Z, otherwise known as alternate angles. It's also not going to be hard... Um, Here's B, right? This is like a backwards Z. B. So what have I got? I've got A, C, and B all adding together to sit on this straight line. So A plus B plus C is 180 degrees. Now, that means that the internal angles of a triangle equal 180. That's why, again, building from the ground up, Everything's linked, everything makes sense. Just on the topic of that, something that you've seen before is that uh, the exterior angle of a triangle, so like I'll just draw the little symbol first of all. Um, okay, so there's your triangle, and the, the exterior angle of the triangle, this thing here, uh, is equal to uh, A plus C. And it's not hard to see why. Uh, here's B, supplementary angle. And those, that angle there is going to be equal to A plus C, isn't it? Um, because it's got to add up to 180. Um, so there you go. There's a little exterior angle of the triangle. Last thing I'll mention in this sort of long and wide-ranging video is a quadrilateral. Uh, now, you can draw that however you want to. Um, A, B, C, D. Those angles, what do they add up to? Sorry, I shouldn't make those equal. That's A. That's not equal. All right, A, B, C, D. What are they going to add up to? Well, it's not hard to see that a quadrilateral, any quadrilateral, should be able to be split into two triangles. And now we have A. We have an angle plus an angle, an angle plus an angle. 
Well, we know the internal angles of this one must be 180. Boom, boom, boom. We know the internal angles of this one must be 180. This angle plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this makes the internal angles of the quadrilateral, which is 360. So the internal angles of a quadrilateral equals 360. Everything built from the ground up, no holes, no tiny little bits that sort of appear out of thin air. Now, using all of these tools, we're going to start looking at some geometric proofs for circle theorem. So you should be able to look at an idea, I'll say this thing's true, and you should be able to say, well, I know all of this stuff's true, I don't have to reprove that. I'm going to use some of this stuff that I know to prove this new thing that I didn't know. That's what geometric proofs is all about. All right.